Good morning everyone. In this video, we are going to cover the current affairs. Now because of certain issues, yesterday the video was not posted. So current affairs of 13th October are covered in this video as well. And some of the issues will be covered in upcoming video. So no need to worry. Now let's start. For mobile optimized ebooks, please install GK Today Academy app. For regular updates, please join our telegram channel. The link is given in the description box. Now we have started a new channel, Civils Academy. You can subscribe to it if you find it relevant. Now, as per the recent announcement of RBI, which service is to be made available round the clock from December 2020? So this is RTGS. Now what is RTGS? It is real time gross settlement. So from December 2020, this service will be available 24 by 7. That means 24 hours and 7 days. Now means as of now, the customer transactions under RTGS are allowed from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. only and that too on working days. Now the unique thing about RTGS is that there is no upper limit for the transaction. That means you can transfer as much money as you want, but there is a lower limit and it is 2 lakh rupees. It is important to remember that this RTGS system is primarily meant for large value transactions as there is no upper ceiling. That means there is no upper limit. Now in this context, please read about NEFT as well and IMPS and BVPS how they are different from each other. This is your homework. In NEFT, which is also a electronic fund transfer system, in NEFT, the transactions received up to a time period are processed in batches. Suppose till 1 a.m. there are four transactions. So at 1 a.m. these four will be processed together. In simplest term, this is the meaning of processing in batches. Which is the biggest economy to join COVAX Global COVID-19 Vaccine Alliance as on 10th of October 2020. So this is China. Recently, China decided to join this COVAX. So far, USA and Russia have stayed out of this COVAX initiative. So now, China is the biggest economy to join this. Now, what exactly is this COVAX? So it is a vaccine alliance and it is led by three organizations. One is CEPI, one is Gavi, and one is WHO. So CEPI stands for Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovation and it was launched in 2017 in Davos and the headquarters is in Oslo in Norway. Gavi is Global Vaccine Alliance and this was formed in 2000 and the headquarters is in Geneva. WHO is World Health Organization Recently, WHO was in news because of Dr. Harshwathan as he became the executive board chairperson. That means he became the chairperson of executive board of WHO. It is a 34 member board. As per the RBI's announcement, what is the quantum of funds to be provided to the banks under ONTAP TLTRO? So the amount is rupee 1 trillion. And recently, RBI announced that it is going to provide funding to the banks and this total amount is going to be approximately 1 trillion under this TLTR. And this money will be used by banks to provide loans to different sectors and the rate of interest for these funds will be fixed at a floating rate. And this rate will be linked with policy rate and it will be available till 31st of March 2021. Now what is the meaning of this term floating rate? It means the rate will fluctuate and it will fluctuate according to this policy rate. There's another type of rating system. It is fixed rate. So in case of fixed rate, suppose rate is 4%. So it will remain 4%. In case of floating, sometime it may be 3.5%. Sometime it may be 4.5% depending on the scenario. So this is floating rate. Now there is one more term T L T R O. It stands for targeted long term repo operations. Now what is repo? Repo is the repurchase agreement between Reserve Bank of India and any banking institution. So this is the rate that means this repo rate is the rate at which any bank receive money from Reserve Bank of India and this is for short term. So suppose there is a bank ABC. It received money from Reserve Bank of India. 
for short term and this is received at repo rate. Now when this is done for long term then it is LTRO. LTRO is a tool that allow bank to borrow from the central bank at repo rate. But when the objective of this money is already pre-decided, objective means that you are going to invest this money in this sector. So this is a pre-decided objective. In that case, it will be TLTRO that is targeted long term repo operations. Repo is for short term. If it is done for long term, then it is LTRO. If it is done with the pre-decided targeted objective, then it is TLTRO. For example, when RBI provide money to these banking institution for investment in corporate debt, then it is TLTRO. Why so? Because the objective is clear that it is a money which is to be invested by the banks in the corporate debt. This is one simple example. So if objective is specific, then it is going to be TLTRO. The Prime Minister launched the distribution of property cards under which scheme? So this is a Swamitav scheme. Swamitav stands for survey of villages and mapping with improvised technology in village areas scheme. Now I have already uploaded a detailed video on this topic. You can watch it by clicking the I button here. So these are the property cards which will be distributed to the people like you have your 10th certificate. Similarly, people will have their property card that will verify their ownership. And this is being done under this Swamita scheme. Indian Navy has cancelled the contract with which company regarding naval offshore petrol vessels. So this company is Reliance Naval and Engineering. Why Indian Navy cancelled this contract? Because of delay in the delivery, this contract was cancelled. Actually this contract was signed in 2011. Contract was related to 5 naval offshore petrol vessels. It is important to note that this company that is RNEL that is Reliance Naval and Engineering Limited is going through debt resolution process in the NCLT. What is NCLT? It is National Company Law Tribunal. Now coming back to Indian Navy. Recently Indian Navy was in news as it conducted passage exercise and this exercise was with Australian Navy. Recently Australia was in news because former Australian cricketer Dean Jones passed away. Who is the head of expert group formed by the Labour Ministry to assess the employment situation in the country? So this group will be headed by S.P. Mukherjee. Recently, Labour Ministry announced that Labour Bureau is going to evaluate the employment situation in the country. This Labour Bureau is under Labour Ministry and therefore a group has been constituted to review the process and this will conduct three surveys. That means this specific expert group will conduct three surveys. One survey will be on migration, another survey will be on domestic workers and Third survey will be on professional bodies. Now recently Labour Bureau was also in news because of its new logo. Recently DPS Negi took charge as the DZ of Labour Bureau. Shantosh Gangwar is the Labour Minister. Which European country has shared the details of bank accounts with India as a part of AEOI what is AEOI? It is Automatic Exchange of Information. This means both countries will automatically exchange information with each other and this information will be related to taxation and financial details. So recently India received this information from Switzerland under this AEOI pact. So this is second such set of information. First such set of information was received in 2019 in September. Now recently Switzerland was also in news as Monica Mohata was appointed as India's next ambassador to Switzerland. Apart from her recently Pradeep Kumar Rawat was appointed as India's next ambassador to Netherlands. These are IFS officers who are appointed as ambassadors. Recently IFS day was celebrated on 9th of October. 9th of October was also celebrated as World Post Day and National Post Day was celebrated on next day that is on 10th of October. Central Mine Planning and Design Institute is a subsidiary of which PSU? So it is a subsidiary of Coal India. Why it was in news? Because recently 
this Central Mind Planning and Design Institute developed a website and this website has been developed for those who are involved in the research and development in the coal sector. Present coal secretary is Anil Kumar Jain. So this website will help in dissemination of information related to research work in the coal sector. And this Central Mine Planning and Design Institute is based in Rachi. Rachi is in Jharkhand. Recently, Jharkhand was also in news as Sohrai Khowar of Jharkhand got GI tag. GI stands for Geographical Indication. Apart from that, recently, Telia Rumal was given GI tag. Answer in comment box, it is associated to with State of India. Which country has released a new version of its passport to differentiate from China? So this country is Taiwan and recently it released a new version of its passport which contains the highlighted print of English word for Taiwan. Now please understand that China claimed that Taiwan is a part of China. On the other hand, Taiwan claimed that it is independent from China. So technically there are two China. One is ROC that is Republic of China. Another one is PRC that is People's Republic of China. So this is usually called as Main China or Mainland China. And the official name of Taiwan is ROC that is Republic of China. Recently Taiwan was also in news as the former president of Taiwan passed away and he was Li Tang Hui. Recently presidential elections held in Taiwan and Tsai Ing-wen won the presidential elections. Taiwan was also in news as recently it became the first country in Asia to legalize same-sex marriage that is homosexual marriage. The e-invoicing will be available to the taxpayers up to what limit of turnover from January 2021. So the limit is 100 crores and recently it was notified that e-invoicing will be available to the taxpayers having turnover more than 100 crores a year. So this turnover is about a year and this e-invoicing will be applicable from January 2021. E-invoicing means you will not have to carry the physical invoice and you will get a digital invoice for that. So it will be available to the taxpayers having turnover more than 100 crores a year. Now one more thing. It was also announced that this e-invoicing will be made available to all taxpayers for B2B transactions. What is B2B? It is business to business transactions. So for all business to business transactions, this e-invoicing will be available from 1st of April 2021. Which country has commenced anti-submarine drills in South China Sea? So this country is Japan. The capital of Japan is Tokyo. Recently, Tokyo was in news because of Quad meeting. Quad is Quadrilateral Security Dialogue and the second meeting of Quad held in Tokyo in Japan. And four countries are the members of Quad. Japan, India, Australia and USA. It is important to note that this initiative was started by then Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe and the objective was to create Asian arc of democracy. Recently, Japan, India and Australia were also in news because of SCRI. What is SCRI? It is Supply Chain Resilience Initiative. So the objective is to reduce dependency on China. Now, Japan, India and USA are the permanent members of Malabar exercise. It is a naval exercise. And recently, Australia was also in news because India decided to invite Australia for this exercise. India donated over 1.8 million N95 masks to Philadelphia city. The question is, it is located in which country? So it is a city in USA. And to be specific, it is a city in Pennsylvania state of USA. And these masks have been donated to tackle the COVID-19. Recently, USA was in news because it played a key role in Abraham Accord. So Abraham Accord stands for the peace agreement between Israel and UAE and Bahrain. So this Abraham Accord was negotiated with the help of USA. So now these countries will have peaceful relationship with Israel. Israel had 
signed such deal in past as well and it was signed with Egypt and Jordan. It is important to note that UAE is the first Persian Gulf country to sign such deal with Israel. Recently UAE was in news because of IPL, it was also in news because of Hope Probe, it was also in news because of Barak nuclear power plant. So it is first such nuclear power plant in the Arab world. Which special day related to biodiversity is celebrated on the second Saturday of May and October. So this is World Migratory Bird Day and it is celebrated on the second Saturday of May and October. And this year it was celebrated on 10th of October. The theme was Birds Connect Our World. Now 10th of October was also observed as World Mental Health Day and the theme was Mental Health for All. So 9th of October was celebrated as World Egg Day. 11th of October was celebrated as International Girl Child Day. It is important to note that in India on 24th of January National Girl Child Day is celebrated. So it is International Girl Child Day and this one is National Girl Child Day. So these were the most important questions. Now we are going to cover important news. Feel free to skip it at your own risk if you do not like the format. But make sure that you cover these events from some other shows. Now first event is Girls Takeover Program. So this was in news because of Finland. Actually 11th of October was celebrated as International Day of Girl Child. So on this occasion Awa Murto assumed the post of Finland Prime Minister for one day. Actually she assumed the post of Finland Prime Minister on 7th of October but this was done in the backdrop of this International Day of Girl Child and this was done as a part of Girls Takeover program. Next is Jagananna Vidya Kanuka scheme. So as the name suggests it is a scheme related to Andhra Pradesh and it is a scheme to distribute school kits among the poor children. So the state government will distribute school kits to the kids of poor family. Now recently Andhra Pradesh chief minister was also in news because of corruption issues in the context of judiciary. So please read that matter that why the chief minister of Andhra Pradesh wrote a letter to the chief justice of India regarding corruption in judiciary and what is this entire issue. Next is blue flag tag. So recently eight beaches of India got blue flag tag. The list of these eight beaches is already uploaded on telegram. You can check it from there. In exam they may ask you that which beach is associated to which state. So please go through that list. Next is Indian economy. So as per a study by Lancet, Indian economy will be the third largest economy by 2050. So we will be third largest economy by after USA and China. So by 2050 we will be third largest and by 2030 we will be fourth largest. That means we will be behind USA, China and Japan and in 2050 we will overtake Japan as well. So this is based on a study by Lancet. Next is Razor Pay. So recently Razor Pay joined the Unicorn Club as Razor Pay raised 100 million of funding and it has received this funding from Sequoia and Singapore Sovereign Wealth Fund GIC. So this GIC is a Sovereign Wealth Fund of Singapore. Now Razor Pay became the fifth fintech company to achieve this unicorn status. Next is Nobel Prize in Economic Sciences. So it was given to Paul R. Milgram and Robert B. Wilson. Now a PDF of all the Nobel Prizes is already uploaded on Telegram channel. Please check it from there. Next is Mission Lantana. So this is a special drive or special initiative to approve the Lantana buses in Sajjangad Wildlife Sanctuary in Rajasthan. So this Lantana is invasive species and to uproot such species in Sajjangad Wildlife Sanctuary in Rajasthan, this mission Lantana was launched. Next is FL Grand Prix. So Lewis Hamilton won this 2020 FL Grand Prix. Next is French Open 2020. So in men's single category, it was won by Rafael Nadal. In women's single category, it was won by Iga Swiatek. And C is from Poland. Nadal is from Spain. 
Next is SO2 emission. So recently, Greenpeace India and CREA, that is Center for Research on Energy and Clean Air, these two released a report and on the basis of that report, India is on top position in terms of SO2 emission. India is top emitter of sulfur dioxide since last five years. But this time, we recorded a significant decline in SO2 emission, even though we are on top position. Next is World Arthritis Day. So it is on 12th of October and the National Arthritis Awareness Month is May. That is, in May, we spread awareness about arthritis and for that, awareness campaigns are launched. Next is Bhaga River. So recently, Balsi Bridge was launched and this bridge is India's longest steel bridge and this is on Manali Le Highway. So this is India's longest steel bridge on Manali Le Highway and this is Barsi Bridge and this Barsi Bridge is over Bhaga River. Overall, it is the second longest bridge in our country. The longest bridge is Colonel Chewang Rinchen Setu and this is on Shoyak River. Please remember, it is India's longest steel bridge but when we talk about overall category of longest bridges in our country, then this one is longest and this is on Shoyak River. Next is Bhai Taru Singh. So recently, Prime Minister paid tribute to Bhai Taru Singh on his 300th birth anniversary. Apart from that, few other personalities were in news because of their birth or death anniversaries. So recently, Prime Minister released a special 100 rupees coin on the 100th birth anniversary of Vijaya Raje Sindhya and she was a founding ruler of BJP. So she is associated to politics and on the occasion of her 100th birth anniversary, Prime Minister launched 100 rupees coin. Apart from that, recently Prime Minister paid tribute to JP Narayan and to Nanaji Desmukh. So Nanaji Desmukh was a social activist and JP Narayan was a well-known freedom fighter. Next is Chetan Anand. So recently, Chetan Anand was named as the brand ambassador for Transform. So Chetan Anand is associated to badminton and he has been named as the brand ambassador of this badminton brand Transform. So that was all for the day.